This is a 2024 Lexus GX 550 in the Luxury Plus trim. Luxury Plus, yes. Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. I had a chance to drive this at the first drive event. I have a video on the channel on this. We, we took it uh, off-roading, we explored it. But in this time, I have this Luxury Plus edition for a week at my house. Let's talk about if my thoughts have changed on this vehicle. Remember, from the, if you ever saw the first videos, I really liked the big improvement they did versus the Lexus GX 460 and 470, that kind of stuff. This is much better. So let's go ahead and talk about this one. So this, like I said, the Luxury Plus edition. The top feature is Luxury Plus. I have it, a little bit of a, a cheater here. Uh, basically, you get a cool box, digital rear mirror, and you get the power running extended board. I'll show you that. We have a panoramic uh, glass roof on there, the Mark Levinson system, and the adaptive varial suspension comes Luxury Plus. Uh, if you're thinking this thing looks like a Land Cruiser, well, sir, ding, 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 you are correct. It's basically the new Land Cruiser, just luxified, 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 yeah. So we have, uh, you know, you have this more upright stance than GX versus the RX, right? This is more your off roading, it's more for that, not so much that. And we have the bigger tires. Uh, they say 22 inch tires on the uh, sheet and uh, yeah, those things are massive. <laughs> we have uh, we have the squared off mirrors. We have the, the nice kind of wrap in here. That's styling there, right? Uh, we have, this is your fuel, which um, does that have a button? Ah, I like it when they pop out. Uh, the 22 inch wheels there as well. Come on the back, we have a little, it looks like a diaper. It's not, it's a cover for the uh, receiver hitch there. Uh, we have two ways to open the, the hatch. We can do this just for the glass, which is really handy for getting stuff in there, just reaching and grabbing stuff like, hey, my golf club's still in there. Huh, I gotta pick this up a little bit. I better get those out. And then we have this, which you can open up the whole way. You can see the taillights wrap around there too. It's really kind of cool look. And then in the back, I have this, so I have my golf clubs in here. It's kind of an example. Yes, I left them in there for a reason. But uh, you can kind of fit one set across. Like it doesn't, it's not enough distance between that and the rear seats. These seats do come up. This does have a third row. It's a small third row um, versus say the Overtrail Edition. Overtrail does not have a third row. So there's a difference there. And it is a powered third row and we do have a power plug back here too. So nice. If you're doing any sort of, uh, you know, camping or whatever you can do with this thing, we'll close that. And then we'll come over here. And here's your second row. Those are the power extending folding. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> I'm getting all confused. Power extending running boards. Um, one of the things I don't know if I like them so much is they're just, they don't stick out very far. Oh, look at my uh, sandals, a little hair on my toe. Um, but you know, you don't stick out very far and they just, a little, just a little awkward. I'm not sure I like that design. I like to, if they pop out just a touch further, make more sense to me. Uh, a little styling here. We have, there's our seats. Pretty comfortable seats as Lexus is, has comfortable seats. We have heated up board seats. I am surprised we don't, these aren't cooled. That's been a thing lately where luxury vehicles started adding cool and ventilated second row seats. I don't know, it's a thing. Oh, and uh, yeah, that's a crop duster. Did you know they still spray crops? I didn't know that before I lived here. He's out crop dusting. Uh, we're gonna have payload should be right here. It's 1,235 pounds in the smallest print ever. And we have some seat controls there. Parking sensors, turn on that plug in the back, open the tailgate. There's our steps, we can turn them on or off. So if you're, you know, if you're off-roading or something and you don't want them to deploy, you can turn them on, turn them off. We do have uh, the hood, which I'll, I'll show the hood here in a minute. Back of the house, people get freaked out when I have the hood open on the side of the road. <laughs> Ask me how I know. All right, so we have the uh, screens built in here, which is nice. It doesn't feel like it's um, added on, like an iPad screen bolted to something. I like the way it's integrated. I like the way the dash line is all straight and everything just seems like it works really well. Um, Pre-production vehicles, so if you see anything that's kind of weird, it's just this is done before production started as far as built before production started. Uh, we have full-time four-wheel drive, so high four or low four. Um, locking center differential some different drive modes and i have auto hold for uh that's that's a nice feature i haven't used it very much but some people freaking love that feature where if you're at a stop sign or stoplight whatever you press a button it'll hold the brake until you're ready to go just hit the throttle the accelerator the right pedal and move uh usb is there i still have not figured this thing out um i played with this on the uh press drive my son was playing around with it i don't know the purpose <laughs> 
<laughs> it looks nice, but I just, I don't know. It's just, I don't understand it. So uh, there's some cup holders here and wireless charger there. Uh, so your phone goes here, by the way, which is, but I thought that was what the phone was for. And it might be another place to hold your phone. Sorry if I'm moving the camera around too much for you. But you can't, it doesn't, yeah, I don't understand it. Uh, there is some hard plastic here, which actually I like. And I like it because it's easy to clean off. Again, your design of this vehicle is to go that way more often than that way, right? So it's designed to be off-roading. So if you're trying to debate between the LX or the GX and the RX, just think how much dirt you're going to be in. That's your differences. And then we have the digital cluster there, some controls here for this vehicle. Let's go ahead and flip the camera around and we'll talk a little more about this. Oh, digital rear mirror, by the way, if you've never seen this, boom, boom. Really good at night. Nobody talks about that. Really good at night. It locks the glare, the glare of the headlights behind you. Okay, let's go over my cheat sheet and get all the details before I give you some like, conclusions. Um, oh yeah, that's the cool box. <laughs> I'll grab my phone and show you this. This is a, if, if, uh, this cool box is interesting. So, there it is. You hear that fan moving? It's a cool box. So the idea here is, turn it off, it's rather loud. Um, if you're overlanding or off-roading or whatever you're doing, um, you have a cool drink in there, which actually I was talking to the uh, an overlanding club once, a GX 460 club in Uray, Colorado, and they were like, that's the best thing ever. We fight over that all the time. Like, really? Big deal for a lot of people. Uh, not a huge deal for me, uh, personally. So this is the same platform, like I said, a Land Cruiser. We have a similar engine that they use in the Tundra, although I'm told it's a little bit different uh, block and materials and things. Uh, 349 horsepower, and we have max torque at 479 foot-pounds of torque at about 3,600 RPM. Get all that max torque. 10-speed uh, automatic transmission. This tows about 7,000 pounds, 6,955 to be exact. About 7,000 pounds. Uh, fuel economy, 15, 21, 17. Uh, that's city, highway, and combined. Uh, the big change this year is going to be driving. Whoa. Uh, double wishbone front suspension, four link with coil spring rear suspension, and the adaptive variable, variable suspension. So the computer reads the road in front of you and can make up to like six, 650 different level adjustments for the dampers. So that way it adjusts to the road vibrations and road situations. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Uh, eminent white, white pearls exterior. Interior or saddle tan and ornamentation is brown grained trim. Oh, cool. Uh, retail price $84,395. This starts at about $64,000. So you can, um, for the premium model, and then you add more and more features, you move up. So uh, triple beam LED headlights, the pop. Uh, oh, it's got a kick sensor in the power rear door. I didn't show you. Sorry. You put your foot down there and it opens your door. Um, I have hit or miss with that stuff. And heads up display, optional features include heads up display, a digital key, which is on your phone. It's got a tunnel cover in the back. Interesting. The cold area package, winch wiper, de icer, headlamp, headlamp washer, fast response interior heater. That's actually a really good thing to have. Um, uh, I imagine that's a separate auxiliary heater that heats up the cabin faster probably what their marketing term means. And that's really handy in the wintertime because it gets freaking cold out here. And uh, driver attention monitor. Ooh, hiss on that one. The uh, cold area package is $200. That's it. That can't be right. Huh. 200 bucks for the windshield wiper de-icer, headlight, lamp, washer, and the fast response interior here. That is a bargain, folks. Uh, second row captain's chair is 440 bucks. Premium paints, $500 premium paint and traffic jam assist which I have used with uh, a person who works on that system for Toyota, and it actually, it does work. <laughs> it, it, if you're in traffic jam, it'll, you can turn it on, and it'll kind of keep distance between the vehicle in front of you, and just kind of, you just sit back and relax a lot more. You're not so stressed in a traffic jam. Uh -huh. Okay, so on the road, wow. I still like this powertrain. I still find it pretty respons responsive. Um, it doesn't feel like I'm gonna squawk the tires at all, but I think it's so much better than the prior generation. It's it's almost one of those conversations that you can have with yourself saying, should I do the prior generation or should I do this one? There's no conversation. You gotta do this one. This is, to me, the much better powertrain in this vehicle versus the prior generation. Hands down. Not even a question. Um, behind the wheel, you definitely sit more upright. As you'd imagine, this is more of the truck-like feel of the Lexus uh, SUVs versus say the RX is a little down lower. Um, but this one, I, I find visibility is great. Lots of visibility. I can see all the way around me. The A pillar is really small. 
Um, I'll put some video on the screen when I grab my phone here in a minute. And we can talk about the visibility in the cabin. The mirrors, even though they're blocky, I don't think they really, they don't interfere with my, my sight that well, that much. So not a problem there. Um, and I can get on it and go. There's a little turbo lag there when you go, you know, wide open throttle. Um, it's not as responsive as other powertrains are, but how many times you can do wide open throttle with this thing? This is, to me, it's not that customer. Uh, but you can get around, you know, get around vehicles. Uh, I like the overall layout of everything, the dash, everything's easy to see, everything's easy to look at um, and to read, reachable, that's all great. But feels good, good seats, uh, pretty comfortable, yeah. I, and I would say the adaptive variable suspension, it's been interesting. I've had some friends talk about how, um, my friends and colleagues talk about two things. First they talk about the hood kind of vibrates a little bit in the wind. And I might be able to show that um, when I get a chance with the camera. And it, it, it definitely moves a little bit, which is, I don't know. It's, I, I think you get used to that. The second thing they talked about was it doesn't ride as well as they thought it was gonna ride. Like driving it, it's not as comfortable to drive as they thought it was gonna be as far as behind the wheel. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, it hits a little bit different on uh, some of the road vibrations than I expected. Um, if the road is like broken up concrete, like, you know, every, I don't know, every, uh, so, so many feet, there's a, there's a crack, crack in the concrete. Um, it definitely rides a little bit worse on that than I would expect. Now, I don't know if it's because of these 22 inch wheels that definitely plays a factor in that. Um, and the premium would ride a little bit better on that, but it is surprising. I, I really liked the way the adaptive variable suspension worked when I drove it. I think we're in Arizona. We did that drive. Um, and now that I've had it for a week, I still like the improvements they've done when I compare this to other generations of the GX, but I am surprised that I, I don't love it as much as I thought. Hmm. I think there's a way to say it. I mean, it's the, as far as the adaptive variable suspension, it seems like it's just, yeah, that's a bad railroad crossing, but it hit pretty hard. Now we just still have a body on frame vehicle. And again, it is a huge improvement. I'm, I can't, it's huge, massive, large improvement over the prior generation. So I can't get, can't say that enough on camera. But I am surprised that it doesn't ride that much better. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of what my thoughts are. I mean, I like the powertrain, I like the seats, I like the interior. I think for this type of, type of vehicle, I think it works well. I think people are really gonna like it because they like that old FJ Cruiser kind of look. And this definitely has that. Um, again, comfortable, road trip worthy. Yeah, just uh, I am surprised that the ride quality isn't as good as I expected it to be. That's about my only criticism. Everything else? Big thumbs up. All right, so for more, check the videos over here. Website down below as well, pickuptrucktalk.com. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.